Hey guys, my name is Anthony Fontana. I'm a CPA with EA Tax Resolutions. In this video, we're gonna be going over line by line in detail how to fill out the IRS Form 656 to submit an offer and compromise. If at any point in this video you think this is way too much and you wanna hire a professional, well, you're in luck, I'm here to help you out. Link in the description. You can schedule an appointment with me. We charge a flat 250 and we go through your case and we give you your options. See if you even qualify for something like this. All right, so the 656 is the form you needed to fill out, definitely to file an offer and compromise. And it lays out the terms of the offer. It is basically the contract. It's not basically, it is the contract for the offer. Now, if the offer changes later when the IRS maybe discovers something new or things change, then they will amend the 656 later, but you will need to submit the form 656 to file an offer and compromise. All right, so here it is. The 656 for 2021. All right, let's just go through this line by line here. So you'll see here, first question is, did we use the pre-qualifier tool located on the website? You, it, this really doesn't matter. I think this is just for tracking terms for the, the IRS. You could use it or not. Um, I would not rely on this pre-qualifier tool to see if you qualify for the IRS. This is an IRS tool. They are not in business to settle your taxes. So it's kind of skewed this tool. So if you are looking to see if you qualify, I do have a separate video for that. Uh, it is called what is the IRS offer and compromise and do I qualify take a look at that it kind of puts it into plain English on how to qualify for this offer nonetheless you check one of those boxes and continue so this right here is going to tell us that there's an application fee of $205 to file this offer and you will need to submit a payment for that personal check cashier's check or money order you'll learn later it also can be done online um, unless you are low income. We'll go over that in a second and it's later. You also have to include a, a completed 433A and supporting document, documentation. Now you don't have to, and this all depends on the type of offer that we are submitting. Nine times out of 10, you will need to file this form 433A OIC. And if you're a business, uh, i.e. like a partnership or corporation, you will have to fill out the 433B as well. Um, all right, so let's get into it here. Section one, this is the basics, your name, social, and address. If you have a spouse and they're in on this offer, you would put them there as well. If they are not part of the offer, you do not have to put them in there. Uh, is it a new address? Physical mailing, right? Are there a new address? If yes, would you like to update? Uh, and if you have an, an employer identification number, an EIN or tax ID for your business, you gotta put that there as well. So pretty straightforward, uh, individual tax periods. If your offer is for an individual sole proprietor, nine times out of 10, this is what we're filling out for sure. I'm checking this box, the 1040, this is income taxes right here. This is usually what we're putting here. And you're just gonna list the years that you are filing the offer for. So let's say, I mean, you don't have to put like every, you can, but you don't have to. You can just put like 2006 to 2008. And if we skip a year or something like that, 2012 through 2016 something like that, that's fine. Or if you wanna just put 2006, 2007, 2008, you can do that as well. Whoops, I just realized I did that. That's what I meant to do. Okay, trust fund penalty, this has to do with like payroll taxes and you can file the payroll taxes. So you would check that box. Uh, 941, 940, again, payroll taxes or if there's other, but this is generally what we're putting here because you owe income taxes. So that's what we will do. This warning is saying that the IRS is not gonna settle certain taxes. And it's restitution is, is I think the big one. So if like you were in a lawsuit, maybe you tried to avoid taxes and you got charged with evasion. Uh, yeah, they're not going to settle that. Okay, low income certification. So if, let's see here, and this will, this will kind of tell us how to do it in the fine print, uh, but I'll, I'll give you the plain English on this. Basically, if your income is below these amount and you're with these household size, then we qualify for low income certification. The way we ter determine this is your income is either we look at the 433A OIC, which I did go into detail, a line by line detail on a separate video, which I will include a link in the description. 
you can check that out. But if we look at the 433A, which you will have to fill out before you do the 656, we're gonna look down here. Sorry, what is that? Page six, remaining monthly income right here. Okay, and they're gonna say times that by 12. And if that number is less than over here by your family size, then you would qualify for this low income certification. What the low income certification is gonna get you is you won't have to pay for the application fee of $205 and you won't have to put like the down payment for the offer either. So you will basically won't have to submit any payment when you follow the offer if you qualify. Okay, so either use that 433A, sorry, 433A OIC or we take out like your most recently filed tax return, right, the 1040 and the AGI on that. So let's say, I did not look this up prior. Sorry, but I'll show you right now, 1040. If we look at the 2020, we look at line, where is it, gross income, line 11. Okay, so if line 11 is less than these amounts for the amount of people in your household, then you would qualify. And so we would check this if we're using the tax return, you check this if we're using the 433. A, um, let's see, what does this say here? If you qualify for the low income certification, do not include any payments with your offer, like I just said. However, if you elect to send money, if you elect to send money, right, then we'd fill this out. Don't know why you would elect to send money, but I guess you can. The IRS is always accepting money, right? And so we would fill this out um, because it's here. This is what we do. Payment, by checking this box, I'm requesting all money to be applied to my tax debt. So if like you are sending money, you qualify for this. Or by checking this box, I'm requesting all money be, uh, be treated as a deposit. So deposit would be like towards the offer if it gets accepted. If my offer is not accepted, I request my deposit to be applied to my tax liability. You would initial there if you want that. Failure to initial, my deposit will be applied. Um, sorry, my deposit be applied will result in a refund of the deposit amount. So, you know, you can always, if you want to send some, if you're low income, you want to send some money with your offer, you go ahead, get that done. You click this box, not initial here. And that kind of is like a safeguard for you. So if it does not get accepted, then you'll get that money back. All right, failure, uh, please note the failure to, sorry, we got the street sweeper outside. Let's check the box. Will result in payments being applied to your tax debt and not be returned to you. Do not complete like so. This is if you sent in a deposit and you didn't check one of these boxes, then they're just going to apply it to the tax debt. So there's that business information. Most people are not filling this out. However, if you are, it's pretty straightforward, right? Corporation partnership LLC LLP, uh, but that'd be LLC treated as like a partnership or a corporation. Okay, so if it's LLC and it's a sole prop, you don't have to fill this out. Uh, you want to compromise the tax debt, you must complete the section. You must also include required documentation, application fee. We know that. Okay. Um, and so there you go. That's what you would fill out, you know, pretty basic right here. Um, and then in terms of taxes, right, normally, actually, usually for these, it's, it's the 940s or the 941s, which is the payroll taxes. Okay. And again, what period, quarterly periods. So these would be like, you know, Q1, 2015, Q2, 2016, something like that. Um, okay, reason for the offer. Nine times out of 10, the reason for the offer is a doubt as collectability. We're gonna read this together. I do not have enough in assets and income to pay the full amount. Okay, so that's what we're doing. And how we're showing this is by filling out this 433A. Again, I have a video for this on how to fill this out. This is like the nuts and bolts to the offer and compromises, the 433A. Okay, so we fill this, again, we fill this out first before we do the 656. But if this is then determining that we qualify for the offer, then we say doubt is collectability. Sometimes we check this box and say exceptional circumstances. Um, and there could be all types of different things that happen. Um, ETA, effective tax administration. Generally speaking, if I'm gonna do an ETA, then it's for like retired people that do have enough, right? I owe this amount and I have enough in assets and income to pay the full amount. So you have enough money to pay it, but due to circumstances, 
you can't or shouldn't pay this. And generally speaking, these are for retired folks that have like a decent sized nest egg. But if they were to liquidate that like 401k retirement account, whatever it may be, to pay off their debt, then they're not going to have enough money later in life to live off of. So we would explain that and there would be like a statement for that. This is rare though. These are very rare, both of these, okay? Generally speaking, that is collectability is what you check. Moving on. Payment terms. So we have two types here. We have either the lump sum cash or the periodic payment. And what we're going to do is we look now to see if we're going to fill out this one or this one, right? Back to, again, our 433A. Section 8. And this is it. So right here would be our lump sum. If we filled this out, that would be the lump sum. And if we filled this section out, then it would be that periodic payment. And you'll see here, what is that? Bach H or G? Seats or H or G. Okay. Um, nine times out of 10, we're doing a lump sum cash because what we do here is we take the remaining, uh, sorry, we go box F, which is remaining monthly income times 12. 12 is a lot lower than 24. It's half, right? So your offer would be less if we use that amount. So usually if you're making money, we do the lump sum cash. Now, if you're not making much in income, but you have some assets, then potentially we do the periodic payment, okay? So depends on which one we're doing here. But nonetheless, I would say most times we're doing a lump sum cash. We put our offer, the offer amount is coming from here on the 433A. We put that amount right here. We put 20%, just calculate 20%, what's the remaining? Throw that in there, pretty straightforward. So I guess so you can see some numbers, 200, 800, right? Um, remaining, and then what we do here, so you have to pay the $800 we would say within five months after acceptance. And you can split that out between five payments. I generally don't do that. What I do is I'll just put the 800 bucks right here and within the five months you pay the 800 bucks. If you wanna pay in periodic payments within those five months, you do that. Um, but at, as long as the 800 is paid within the five months after the offer is accepted, then we're good to go, okay? and. Kind of a big question I get a lot of times here is, okay, Anthony, I gotta put the 20% down right now when we pay, when we file this offer. Now, the remaining payment for the offer is not due within five months after it gets accepted. When is that? The answer to this question is it depends, unfortunately. You gotta remember we're working with the government. The government does work slow. We've all been to the DMV. We've waited in that fun line, try and get our driver's license, our, uh, the tags renewed on the car, something along those lines. Uh, it goes slow, okay? So generally speaking, the answer to this question is the, the offer takes anywhere from eight months to two years for it to come to a determination. Either it gets accepted or declined. So eight months to two years, I'd say roughly speaking, it's about a year, year and a half, okay, for it to get accepted. So once it gets accepted, let's say in a year, it gets accepted and then you have five months from that year. So now we're talking at least a year and a half from the time that we file this offer until you have to make this payment. Okay, so just keep that in mind. There is also a lag time. Let's say I just got off the phone with the IRS. The IRS is like, all right, we accept your offer we're moving forward. We signed the documents today, we send it through. The five months doesn't start until we get the letter that says it was accepted. So by the time, from the time that we sign the documents that say we accept the offer and the IRS accepts it as well, to the time that we get the letter, there's a lag time there. Sometimes it takes several months for this to go through. So again, it's all kind of adding to this. Like I said, it depends on how long it takes. Generally speaking, it's probably like a year to a year and a half uh, for the offer to get accepted, then plus five months. Fun stuff, camera's cutting out. Anyways, moving on here. 
So that's, we know how the lump sum cash works onto the periodic payment. If we decide to do this, there is kind of a strategy. Do we do the lump sum or the periodic payment? But generally speaking, if you don't have much in income from the 433A here, then we do the periodic payment because it's not gonna be much of a difference between the two. Um, it's really just gonna be all based on your assets. And if that's the case, then right, we check the periodic payment and we do this. What's the amount of the offer? Again, gonna come from here, 433A. Um, and then we fill this out here. Okay, so the first monthly payment is, let's just put some numbers in. Again, let me get on my handy dandy calculator so I don't mess this up. $1,000 is our offer, let's say. Um, we go divided by 24 because we want, whoops, 1,000 divided by 24. Look at, we'll say $42 a month. So our first payment is 42 bucks. Um, is included, oops, sorry, the first monthly payment of $42 is included with the month, uh, with this offer. Then $42 will be received on the like 15th day of each month thereafter for, we're gonna do 22 months, and you'll see why it's actually in this example right here, it tells us exactly how to do this, uh, with a final payment of 42 bucks, will be paid on the 15th day of the 24th month. So that's generally how that works. Fun stuff about this right here, it's in bold here. You must continue to make these payments while the IRS is considering the offer. So let's say we file the offer today, you're gonna send the $42 today with the offer. Now every month, 15th of the month, you're gonna send a check out, 42 bucks to the IRS until this thing gets settled, okay? So you gotta know that till the final decision letter. Um, so there it is. Failure, sorry, failure to make regular monthly payments until you receive a final, Decision letter will cause your offer to be returned with no appeal right. So if you're not gonna make these payments while this thing's getting considered, you got no chance at this. This thing's all going up in flames, okay? So you need to make monthly payments while this thing's getting considered. Kind of another down side of the periodic payment decision here um, because your money's gonna all, I mean, it's not gonna be lost. It will be applied to your tax debt if this whole thing gets declined. Uh, but nonetheless, you know, that's money maybe you could have uh, used for living expenses, okay? Whereas like the lump sum, we don't have to, we just have to put 20% down and then the the rest of that comes at the end once it gets accepted. If it doesn't get accepted, they keep the 20% the down, apply it to your uh, tax debt. And then obviously you didn't make that 80% payment of the offer, um, you still have it. So that's, I would say, an upside to this lump sum cash. Because the periodic payment, you're basically going to get through most of that by the time they come to a decision of the offer. On to the next page, designation of payment. If you want your payment to be applied to a specific tax year, specific tax debt, such as the trust recovery, please tell us the year quarter. So, I mean, that's pretty straightforward. You just put that there. Okay, so like if this thing gets uh, declined, you just say, hey, this is where I want it to go. If you don't do it, then they're going to say what's best interest for the government, okay? Let's see here. For EFTPS, yeah, so you can make the payment online. That's basically what this is saying. You would have to apply to create an account on EFTPS and you can make the application fee and the offer payment, like that down payment, like we said, depending upon if we're doing lump sum or if we're doing the periodic payment, you can make both of those payments on EFTPS. You just use the link here and uh, Obviously, you got to provide your EFT number while you do that. The payment has to be made. Here we go. Where does it say that? Same day as you mail your offer. Okay. Deposit. Okay. This is another one of those funky ones. IRS is still just trying to get your money. Again, remember the IRS is a collection agency. Okay. Um, do not complete this if you have checked your low income certification. There you go. Pretty straightforward there. But if we are not low income, um, if you're paying more than the initial payment with your offer, so if you're paying the application fee and the initial payment, like the down payment, and so if you're paying more than that, and then you kind of tell them how you want this thing to be uh, paid for, allocated is really what it is. My payment of, let's say, 100 bucks includes, sorry, that'd be like 305, and my first monthly payment, I'm requesting an additional $1,000 to be held as a deposit towards the offer is really what it is. If your offer is rejected, right, how do we want this? We want it returned, and you would initial that, or apply it to your tax debt. If 
you want to do that. Okay, sources of funds. So tell us where you're going to be attain the fund to pay your offer. So remember here where we stopped and paused. I do not have enough assets and income to pay for the offer, or sorry, to pay my taxes in full. Since you don't have enough money to pay for your taxes, and we're trying to settle these here with this offer and compromise, how are you gonna get the money? This is what they're saying. So generally speaking, what I tell clients is we gotta figure out some way to get this money. Either it's a bank loan or it's a loan from your family and friends, and or it's like a gift from family and friends. We would just list that out right here. This right here tells us how to make the payments. Uh, United States Treasury, that's where the money's going to, that's where you make it out to. Uh, but then you would just include the checks in the offer when you mail this out. Filing requirements, I normally check this box. We have, we do like a compliance check before we even file an offer. Um, but nonetheless, you have to, you should have to file all your tax returns before we file an offer and compromise. I always recommend that just so there's no questions later. Now you can check this box as I was not required to make uh, file a tax return for some years. Even if you're not required, I recommend that you do file it. It doesn't hurt to, okay? And it kind of streamlines the process with the offer. Tax payments required, okay? So maybe you haven't been paying off your past debts um, and that's why we're filing this offer in the first place. But the IRS wants to make sure now moving forward, we don't continue to chase our tail here. We gotta be making sure that we're making payments to the IRS. So we gotta check one of these boxes, tell them, hey, we are doing that, okay? So I've made all my estimated tax payments. So if you're either a sole proprietor or you're a wage earner, you're gonna check this box and say, hey, you know, now we're gonna be cool. We filed this new tax year. There's not gonna be taxes owed anymore moving forward. You're gonna check that box. This is a requirement for the offering compromise. If this is not happening, you gotta make sure, first of all, it starts to happen. Second of all, uh, this, and if you already did file an offer, this whole thing could go down in flames here if we're not making those payments, okay? It could. You might get an examiner that's a little more lenient and they're like, well, okay, just get current when we uh, start negotiating is really what it is. Or you're not required to make, like let's say you're not making any income, then you can just check that box. Federal tax deposits, that's for like uh, payroll. If, you know, again, if you haven't made those payroll taxes before, we gotta make sure that they're getting done now, okay? Again, same thing here, where you're not required to, you're not running payroll anymore. Uh, offer terms, it's kind of a lot here. I'm not gonna be going over everything here. It's too much. Uh, so, but I do highly recommend that you go through this because this is like the terms of the offer, how the offer can kind of go up in flames to make sure that you're not gonna make it go up in flames and everything goes smoothly here. Read through this, okay? Uh, in my video where I say what, is an offer and compromises, do I qualify? I kinda briefly go over the offer terms here. So be sure to check that out. It does give you an overview on things we should be looking for, okay? Uh, section eight, signatures, you can put your name, phone number. I, 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 if you hired a professional, I wouldn't put your phone number and they would be filling this all out for you. But if you did this yourself, you're gonna throw your phone number in there and you're gonna check this box. You're telling the IRS that you are authorizing them to contact you. I actually had, excuse me, I had a client the other day that reached out to me and I told him, hey, we're still waiting on a call from the IRS. And he's like, the IRS is gonna call you? I thought the IRS doesn't call you. Well, we're checking this box to tell them, yes, call us, okay? So generally speaking, yeah, the IRS does not call you, but if you're telling the IRS to call you, they eventually will, okay? So that's what you do. Fill that out, pay prepare, they'll know what to do here, IRS. So that's it. Um, man, I hope this video was helpful for you guys. If it was, do the usual, help me out. Share this with anyone else you think this might be helpful for. Click that like button or hit the dislike button and tell me why you disliked it, how maybe I can improve moving forward. I'm doing all kinds of videos on helping people with back taxes. So be sure again to check back with our channel. I'll probably have some more videos or go ahead and check it out right now. There are probably some in there that may be able to help you out. Thank you so much for watching the video, guys. Take care.